In the following examples, we're asked to find the domain of the expression. So it's important to know what we're talking about. Well, domain, for the most part, is what we're talking about when we say all of the x values, all of the possible x values. In the first expression, we're dealing with the variable p. So we're talking about all the possible values that we could have for p so that we have a, a value that would exist. Now, looking at the denominator is important for these kinds of expressions. All we have to do is look at the denominator and remember that we have the numerator on top and the denominator on bottom. So we're looking at this right here, p minus 3. What value of p would give us an issue? Well, the problem is that you cannot divide by 0. So we should not have 0 in the denominator. So what we do is say, well, p minus 3 equals 0. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. And we can state, well, at p equals 3, the denominator would equal 0. So p should not equal 3 in this case. All right. So what values of the domain would this include? Well, it would include all values except p equals 3. So you can write it as p not equal to 3, or you might say that the domain goes from negative infinity all the way to 3, all right, and we're not including that 3. And then we're going to take the union using set notation because we have to start at 3 again, and we're not including 3, and we used included 3, we would have used a square bracket from 3 all the way to positive infinity. Okay, so I'll denote positive infinity like this. So again, it is from negative infinity, and let me just correct myself here, negative infinity to 3, and then the union from 3 to positive infinity. So this is how we will notate it there. Now in this second example, again, all we have to do is look at this denominator. So we're going to say, well, where can our denominator uh, be equal to zero? And that's where we will have an issue. That's where, that's what restricts our domain. So let's set the denominator 3x minus 2 equal to zero in the first case. You add 2 to both sides. I have 3x equals 2 and then I divide both sides by 3. So x equals, in this case, 2 thirds. So x should not be equal to 2 thirds because that gives you your first issue. You'd have a 0 in the denominator. The second case says, well, x plus 7 equals 0. So x should not be equal to, well, negative 7. So x should not be equal to negative 7. So these are two areas right here that I'll point out. x should not be equal to 2 thirds or x should not be equal to negative 7. Now writing it in this set notation, we would say, well, we have our domain going from, in this case, negative infinity all the way to negative 7. And then we're going to close that because we're not including negative 7 the parentheses, union, and then we go all the way from negative 7 to the value 2 thirds, a fraction, and then we're not including the 2 thirds again, so we need parentheses, and then another union, all right, because we're, uh, we're on our next set of intervals, and that's what this is really. Uh, the next part would be from 2 thirds, and again, parentheses, all the way to positive infinity. So that's what we would have there. Let me just correct that real quick. Positive infinity. So that's what our domain would be in this example. That's what we're looking for when we say find the domain of an expression.